The Lord be with you. Read from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, Have I shown you many good works from my Father? For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We're not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods? If it calls them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. And they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man is true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's good to be with you today as we uh, continue in this season of Lent and draw very close to the beginning of Holy Week and that very special time and of course Lent ends we transition into Holy Week uh, we transition into the sacred triduum uh, as we get closer to Easter and I always feel and I think this is just, I feel inadequate as a preacher at this time of year. <laughs> or I feel more inadequate than I did at other times of the year because, <laughs> because there is so much. And, and who can exhaust what God wants to share with us, his people, in sacred scripture and in the liturgy, uh, in Holy Week and in this, this special, special time? I know that, I guess no one can, but I feel like I really can't. And today, we encounter the story of Jeremiah, and we're seeing Jeremiah and his struggle related to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, his whole mission for us, uh, his missio to, 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 to Israel, to, to his people. Uh, this man named Pasher had had uh, Jeremiah in prison and even had him beaten for proclaiming that... God would punish and correct Israel. You might think, well, you know, that happened all the time. Well, uh, the problem with that is that Pasher was the chief officer of the temple. The chief officer of the temple of the Lord. He was in charge of the worship of God. And Jeremiah, being sent by God, proclaimed that Israel was in need of correction. And the response was to beat him physically and imprison him. And so we enter into this reading that is an excerpt, of course, and uh, Jeremiah is, is, is speaking, in a sense, on behalf of those who hate him, those who are trying to destroy him. And Jeremiah says that he believes God will rescue him in some way, that they will be put to lasting, unforgettable confusion. 
And that word that is used in English, you know, confusion, we think of confusion as confusion. <laughs> Where do I put my car keys? You know, is the stove on? Whatever. Uh, make sure you keep an eye on those kind of things, by the way. All right. But confusion here, the, the, the word that they translated is really more of um, chaos. The, the original word is more along the lines of destruction. And I think of what Father Mike Austin had shared with us in our parish mission, because we know that at the end, in the end, through the victory of the cross, uh, in light of the victory of the cross, that Satan is defeated. Satan and his, uh, his alliance is put to unforgettable final destruction. And they are the ultimate losers in the, in, in the face of what Christ has done for us and that they would not serve God. And so, in a sense, Scripture is drawing a parallel between the enemies of Jesus in that time and place and the enemies of God throughout history. And so, we see that in the Gospel as well, where this is a scene of rejection, of rejection of Jesus by the people there. Uh, the, in, in this case, the Jewish people that are around Jesus. And their, their struggle with, with, with the Christ here is that, uh, you know, Christ is saying, in effect, he is a son of God. He is a share in the divine nature of God. He is God. And uh, the punishment for blasphemy is stoning. They want to, to kill him. And Jesus makes this point, and I find this so striking, uh, that he, he doesn't just say, well, I'm the Son of God, deal with it, sunglasses, you know. <laughs> I'm the Son of God, deal with it, and I don't need to give you a reason. But he actually does try to, to convince them. He says that if I perform the works of my Father, you should believe me. Why is that significant? Because remember in another place in Scripture where, and I, I'm going to really point you to this, where God said that the way you would know a prophet is because if what they prophesy comes true, that means they were a true prophet of God. Do any of you remember that? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? There's a place where... God says that if a prophet's words are true, that means they were sent by me. But if what they say does not come true, do not believe him. And so Jesus is saying, look at what I've done. I have rescued those who were broken physically, mentally, emotionally. I've exorcised. I've raised some from the dead. How is that not the work of God? And as I reflect on this, I feel like so much of the struggle we have and people have is that we refuse to recognize the authentic work of God in our midst. And we can be condemned for that. We deserve it if we're going to refuse to recognize that. I'm not just referring to inside the, inside the church. You know that God is rescuing people every day. I think of the great works of charity that our church throughout the world does. I think of the works, the great humanitarian works. And especially, I think of the forgiveness of sins, children being baptized. You see great people doing heroic things every day and serving the Lord and lifting others up. Uh, there's a, a wonderful organization I heard about recently called Exodus Cry. And I really had never heard of them before, and I, I think that's the name, Exodus Cry. Exodus Cry is an organization that fights child trafficking, sex trafficking, um, what we call a pornography culture, and helps to protect children and young people from that culture. But it's mainly about rescuing people that are actual active victims of sex trafficking, of course, many of them being under legal age and uh, they and, and so Exodus cry 
is saving lives, and I haven't even known about them very long. How incredible is that? Isn't that the work of God? How is that not the work of God? And yet I assure you, there are people who are trying to shut things like that down. They would say, well, you know, age is just a number. It doesn't really matter. People should be allowed to live their lives. And there are organizations that try to shut Exodus Cry down. So we need to be able to recognize the work God is doing in the world. And the question we can ask ourselves, are we on God's side? as Jeremiah was, or are we not?